like I went through a fat stage um, and that was dope. You know, that was good. I mean, my mental health was a wreck. I had so much I had to work on. You can see like, look at the ripple in my arm, bro. Like look at the fatness in my arm. It's so interesting. This was the fattest I've ever been. I'm 5'1 and I weigh right now, I weigh 130. I weigh 59.9 kilograms, baby. What is that? 130, I think, the conversion. I don't, and I'm never going to be mad at Fat Brittany. She f***ing coped the best way she could, and I am never going to be mad at her for gaining that weight. We've covered Leo Skeppy before. I'm not the biggest fan of Leo Skeppy. And you guys probably know that Leo Skeppy had the gut in a plan and my video got age restricted when I talked about it. YouTube age restricted my Le original Leo Skeppy video because of the subject matter. So, but Leo Skeppy was recently under fire on TikTok this week for fat phobia. And I thought, oh, well, let's, let's go over it since some of you already mentioned it in the comments. A brand not making your size in something does not give you grounds to talk shit and degrade the brand. Brands are allowed to want a certain look and image with their products. They are allowed to make things for the people they want to make them for. I've been seeing too many people talking shit recently and it's pissing me off. People are allowed to have preferences and brands are allowed to create an image with what they want and have a specific type of person wear what they have. Not everybody needs to be catered to by everything and everyone. And this is a lesson I had to learn when I was fucking fat. I used to think clothes just weren't flattering. No, babe, the body wasn't fucking flattering. But a lot of brands don't make my size and a lot of shit still. And if a piece of clothing is not flattering on you, it doesn't mean the item or product is not flattering or is not good. It's not made for you. I'm a size 16 shoe. A lot of brands... Oh. Is that it? Okay, I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, okay, okay. How do we feel about that? I mean, initially, obviously, I know where he's coming from. I think Leo Skeppy also fits into a very specific category of person, which is kind of like, I I don't want to say like fat boy pick me, but I want to say like someone who used to be fat and is now in shape and only wears clothes that flatter his aesthetic. I think he has a lot of pride and I think he probably feels like he should talk shit on fat people because he used to feel shit when he was one. And I think a lot of people feel shit whether they're skinny or fat. And I just feel like Leo is that type of person though. I mean, he's so angry. He's so bitter. He literally talks about having like a poop plan and a, you know, a plan. He often talks about the violence he wish he could carry out on people. He often talks about how he wants vengeance. He want you do. He's just an angry person and angry per people are sad people and uh, sad people are hurt people and hurt people hurt people. And so I just think we're watching like a former fat boy hurt people. I feel like that's what we're witnessing. I don't think it's much deeper than that. I'd like to think it is, but only because you'd like to think that these very famous popular content creators have more going on. But to be fair, he's in his early 20s and this is probably his, this is uh, his lived experience. You know what I mean? Now, I think like brands and companies have the right to have an aesthetic that they'd like to to push out as a part of the brand. I don't think that's a big deal, but I will say uh, more than fat people not having a lot of options, I would just say like poor people don't have a lot of options in terms of clothing because rich fat people can get custom clothes made. I think poor people in general or people who can't spend too much on clothing, I think they have more of an issue finding clothes that fit nice that are or that look nice. Like even for myself as I'm moving into my mid thirties, when I try to find quality clothing and I try to find quality pieces, I'm going to be real with you. I mean, in my opinion, if I'm going to upgrade to quality, the minimum price to start for one item of clothing is like $40. That's a lot of money to spend on a wardrobe if every piece is $40 to $50 to $60 to $70, you know, especially with fast fashion being so popular. And a lot of people don't have the money to buy custom clothing or to have custom clothing. I don't know. I just think that he's probably coming from a perspective of shallowness because like Leo Skippy super shallow. And on top of that, I think he has an internalized hate for himself for having been a fat person in the first place. And I think there's a lot that goes into that. A lot of like pain and suffering that goes into that. So I'm not that surprised he made a fat phobic tweet, but I'm a little surprised people are shocked. But you know, after I posted my initial even TikTok on Leo Skeppy, it's now kind of getting some traction. People have no idea what he says in his podcast because people know him from TikTok. The funny thing is like if your audience knows you on one platform but not another platform, they don't see all of you. So Leo Skeppy is somebody that people view as being like a self-help person on TikTok. But then when they see his takes, they're like, oh, what? Because you kind of associate some version of he's gay, he's young, he's working with brands. You're going to assume he's also maybe not fatphobic which I think is a bad assumption. I would assume he could be a lot of things. 
you know? But I think that that's probably what's also playing into this, right? I think he wants to be pretty. I think Leo Skeppi wants to be adored. I think he wants to be worshipped. I think he's vain and shallow. I think he's very young and stupid. I think he wants to be sexy. And I think he's probably felt ugly a lot of his life and he assumes it's because he was fat, but he doesn't understand his ugliness is also his personality. If we think about it from a branding perspective, they have the right to brand how they want. I just think like Leo could have stopped there, but instead of saying like a brand is allowed to have their own aesthetic, he went on to say fat bodies are ugly bodies. And I only, I just think that's not always true. I think some fat bodies are ugly. I think some skinny bodies are ugly. I think it's kind of a preference though. I think just all bodies are ugly to somebody. I think all people are ugly to somebody. I truly believe that. And then there are people that are just like very, very pretty and you can't deny that. But even then, not everybody's into you. I remember showing a picture of this like really attractive woman to my brothers and none of them thought she was like attractive. And I was like, oh, like in my head, I'm thinking there's no way. But not everyone's attracted to like your aesthetic, you know? I do think people being shocked that this is his take just don't watch him. How old is he? 26. He's like a baby. Everyone making him famous and rich, young, that's your fault for taking self-help information from a 26-year-old who had a e -e 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 plan. I just don't believe that people don't like fat bodies when most of the world seems to have some level of obesity to it, in America at least. And a lot of the people that are dating people are fat. A lot of the people, like I think sometimes we feel a pressure to want really sculptured bodies, but I don't think that shows in most people. Statistically more likely to be a millionaire in America than you are to have a six pack. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Yep. There's 15 Love million, 15 million millionaires. In my millionaire, I mean net worth. And there's only about 25,000, 30,000 people walking mm -hmm. around lean enough where their abs are showing. Yeah. Like I just, I don't know if I believe people, but I would argue like I'm happy to, I'm like, I'm happy to be blunt and say like, oh, that's ugly to me. I just don't think it's always ugly. So when Leo Skeppi says like, it's the body, it's not the clothes. That's just not true. The clothes are ugly, bro. The clothes are ugly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I believe people, but I'm also, my brain decides how I feel about my body based off if I would fuck myself and I would fuck a lot of people but I think I just try to feel good in myself people find that attractive cool I don't know if Leo Skeppi stays in shape for himself or because he wants the validation I don't know if Tess Holiday stays fat for herself or because she wants the validation I don't believe most people are living the life they want I think a lot of people live the life they think people want them to have and so I don't trust anybody to actually have an opinion because most people don't have their own opinions. They have a pressure from the bubble that has told them this is the opinion you should have. And if you don't have it, you're gross. And so I think these people who are so pressured and then claim they're having the like rebel opinion, I don't even know if they know what they really think. Like Leo Skeppi is trying to be like, oh, I don't care what you guys think. Like, this is my opinion. But I think you do care what people think. That's why you stay in shape. I think you do care what people think. That's why you make fun of fat people. I do think you care what people think. That's why you're shallow. So... I don't know. I don't believe any of you bitches. I don't believe any of you. I think you're all insecure. MM says the clothes are ugly quote. And now we're even more subjective. Well, the clothes are ugly, but it is subjective. And so if fat people are saying, hey, the clothes are ugly. And Leo says the clothes aren't ugly. The body is. Like, girl, what is this conversation we're having? Chat says, I don't care for ripped dudes. Sorry, uh, super ripped dudes aren't are unattractive to me. Okay, so... My audience is specific. I have a theory that queer, neurodivergent people care far less. They care far less about chiseled bodies and they certainly don't have them themselves. I can't tell you how many boys have yelled about fat people on the internet and they're the most unfit people I've ever seen in my life. Why are you opening your mouth? So for me, I don't have a preference. I prefer a middle of the road kind of body, not too skinny, not too fat. I just like a body that's functional in any capacity, but I mean, I can appreciate muscles. Like I can definitely appreciate muscles. I just don't care. I don't seem to care. My dating history shows that I don't care. I mean, I like gamer boys. What gamer boy has muscles, bro? And even like, even if they do, so? I would have dated them without the muscles, so it doesn't even matter. Baldo says, depend on the queer bubble. It does depend on the queer bubble. Uh, that is true. Lots of queer bubbles are very, very shallow. Bro, just like, okay, enjoy your life, bros. Just like enjoy your fucking life. I wish people would learn how to enjoy their life, but they can't. There's too much pressure not to enjoy your life. There's too much money in you not enjoying your life. Q2 says, cis regular women do prefer muscles though. I don't think so. I don't even know what that means. 
not based off anybody in my life who's dating people. Name, I'm sorry, are all your friends dating muscular guys? Men are not muscular. But even in California, men were not walking around with muscles. If you were muscle beach boys, yes. But most men are not fucking walking around with muscles. I don't even know who your friends are dating. Are you, Do you guys all have muscles? Does everyone, nobody, bro, the, who is walking around with muscles except muscle people? That's a very specific category of people. You think most women are married to men with muscles? Nah. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, bro. Okay, as a girl who follows all gym girls and as a person who's been like lifting and trying to like get in better shape and have more muscles, I will say in the muscle bubble, even being in the gym bubble, they're very specific kinds of guys. And those guys are not average guys. They're not average. They're exceptional. People who go to the gym and lift weights and do that shit regularly, bro, they're exceptions. They are not the average person. Kim, Kim says all my girlfriends date guys with tummies, bro. The only ones of my friends that tend to date guys in better shape are my athletic friends. So I have friends that are athletes and stuff like that. They date guys who are more in shape for sure. But even their guys aren't that in shape. They're more in shape than their guys because they're literally athletes, you know? I don't know. Mantis says I prefer confidence in self. Muscular guy or muscly guys are often full of confidence. Well, most muscle guys who spend time at the gym, according to the gym bubble, are incredibly deeply insecure and they're fighting demons. So I feel like we should probably be aware of that. That's why Leo Skeppy's like fighting demons. He's he's like fighting his old fat self, bro. Instead of accepting that you go through a stage. I know people on my Instagram wanted me to talk about my fat stage. And, um, you know, it was a good time. I didn't mind being fat and everything. And like some people have a different even variation of what they consider fat, which is like interesting. I think I learned a lot about myself. Like I went through a fat stage. Um... And that was dope. You know, that was good. I mean, my mental health was a wreck. I had so much I had to work on. You can see, like, look at the ripple in my arm, bro. Like, look at the fatness in my arm. It's so interesting. This was the fattest I've ever been. I'm 5'1", and I weigh, right now, I weigh 130. I weigh 59.9 kilograms, baby. What is that, 130, I think, the conversion? So this is, like, me fat versus me thin. And even in the picture on the right, I was thinner than I am now. You know, and I've been skinny my whole life. But I feel like everyone in my family goes through a fat stage. Not literally everyone, but my siblings and I fluctuate. I'm not surprised though. My dad's side of the family has like obesity problems. My mom's side of the family doesn't, which is like interesting. I went through a fat stage in my 20s. I was very mentally ill and I was eating the fuck out of my feelings. And it was great. You know, it was awful, but it was great. And then I remember losing the weight and that was great. Like, I'm not mad about it. You know, I'm not mad about having that relationship with my body for me. In terms of being a whole human being, I talk about this a lot. You got to work on your physical health and your mental health and your spiritual health and your financial health. And these things are all fucking different. For me, I got to get my financial health figured out so I could pay for my therapy. But mostly before I could even work on my weight, I had to go to therapy. So for me, I, I couldn't even face my body until I went and got my mental health figured out. And during the time that I was the fattest, my family did make fun of me. And I remember having a conversation with my dad where I was like, hey, bro, uh, it kind of hurts my feelings when you make fun of my fatness and it's a struggle for me right now. So I need you to like fucking let it go. And he was like, what do you mean? Why can't I make fun of you? Like, that's what we do as a family. I was like, I feel you on that, bro. But right now it's going to fucking hurt my feelings and I'm already mentally pretty low. And we had a little fight about it and then he got over it and then we talked about it. And it was fine. And now they're super encouraging. Like my dad is like has a home built gym. I'm always calling him for advice on lifting. Like I'm always trying to, you know, get better. But it is one of those things where my mental health is so tied to how much I'm eating. And I don't have an eating disorder in like a traditional sense. I've never identified as a person who does. But I definitely love to eat in general. So my happy when I'm the happiest, I love to overeat. When I'm the saddest, I love to overeat. I just live to eat. So for myself, like I just love fucking food, bro. I love cooking. I love food. I love eating. I love going to restaurants. I just love eating food. So when I'm sad, oh, you better believe I'm eating food. When I was the saddest, in my coffee every morning, I would put like two tablespoons of condensed milk. Not only was I sh overloading on sugar, <laughs> but I was getting fat as fuck, bro. I was eating so I was eating like a bag of Cheetos a day, like hot Cheetos. I went from 30 bags a month of hot Cheetos to like a bag a week. And then I cut condensed milk out of my diet completely unless I was like once a year for Christmas having like a cake 
So, you know, we're all just, we're just having a different relationship with our bodies. I don't, and I'm never going to be mad at Fat Brittany. She fucking coped the best way she could. And I am never going to be mad at her for gaining that weight. I am never going to be mad at myself for fucking eating food and living my life through my sadness. I am never going to be mad at her for being fat. I don't give a fuck what people say. And frankly, I was still fucking hot. I was still modeling lingerie. I was still fucking getting laid. Okay. I still had a partner. I was still fucking running my business. I'm just never going to be mad, mad at that girl. But you know what? I know lots of people who are mad at themselves for gaining, losing, falling behind. And I feel like getting mad at yourself is not accepting where you are in life. Got to accept where you are. Let the anger go and move the fuck on. You know, Q2 says, I want to gain weight. How else did you do it? I'm skinny as fuck. You know what's funny? I have a brother with, I have two brothers. They are so skinny. When they turn sideways, they like disappear. They're so thin. And I always do wonder like, when are you going to gain weight? Because they're so skinny no matter how much they eat. And look, it will catch up with them probably in their mid 30s. They're both, one of them actually is about to hit his mid 30s ish he's a few years away and one of them just turned 28 so he's a little far off but i think they will eventually but they are so thin they are so thin it's ridiculous they are like cocaine thin so again like with peace and love to leo i think he needs to stop being mad at himself for being fat f word says no way i'm so glad you're able to talk to your dad about it i'm having issues talking to my mom about my mental health she claims i have nothing to be depressed about i think that's really common my parents also feel like i have nothing to be depressed about but i think what's important is having those boundaries and saying hey i love you this is my journey and then just doing your journey regardless of who's in your fucking way you know um dolly thank you so much for the super chat and rainbow emoji love to see it i think sometimes people ask me how to have boundaries with your parents you have boundaries with yourself I'm going to do whatever it takes for me to excel. And if you get my fucking way, I'll see you next week when you're not in my way. During my recovery period, when I was trying to get into shape, when I was going to therapy, if anyone got in my fucking way, I just left peacefully, reminded them that I loved them and went on my own fucking way. No one will ever be the reason I do not succeed ever again because it was never their fault in the first place. It was no one's fault. It was just my understanding and perception and the relationship I was having with that perception. Fat Britney was just as important as skinny Britney. Every journey I've ever been on was just as important as this one. Unhealthy Britney needed to be unhealthy to be healthy Britney. It's all just a part of the fucking story, bro. How boring would our lives be if we didn't have a little bit of a messy period? Okay. So I love my parents, but I will not let them get in my way. Even now with fibromyalgia, my mom hates that it might be related to trauma. They like roll their eyes and they think like, what do you, what have you, what have you been traumatized about? Like they all forget that my life has had at least a few challenges because they don't like to think of their own life as that. See, the reason Leo Skeppy is just a sad fat kid who's bullying other fat people because he's bullying himself. It's not about other fat people. It's about himself. He's really talking to his fat self. He's not talking to you, but he doesn't know that. He thinks he's preaching something for you. He's actually talking to himself, right? But that's what people don't understand. It's not about you and you keep trying to make it about you. You keep trying to say, oh, well, like, if you're traumatized, that means I did something wrong. It means you did something that wasn't perfect for me. But as long as you didn't do it on purpose, like live and let live, right? Let's move on. But that's the problem is so many people in our life, we don't mean to bully people. We don't mean to cause harm. We just do by being ourselves because we're so unhealthy and we just don't know that about ourselves yet. We don't know we're unhealthy because we think we're capable and amazing and look how good we are and look how thoughtful and smart and oh my God. And yet we all still make like mistake after mistake after mistake because nobody is perfect. I think people are really obsessed with this idea of perfection. Like if my body says something about me, then I don't have to do the real work to be a fully joyful person. Um, you know those studies they do that prettier people are given pretty privilege, like people think they're nicer? Fat people talk about being bullied and being treated differently because they're fat. And I think that is a real phenomenon that happens. Um, I think that coincides with sort of like a 
sort of advantage that people take um, into account when getting into shape, which is just being treated better, looking like you work hard. It's true. If you have muscles and you go to the gym and you work out, it sends a message to people's brains that you're not lazy and that you can work hard and that you know how to sacrifice. And being fat tends to send a message to people's brains that signals laziness, sometimes even smelliness or lack of grooming and in like some sort of like you can't be trusted. Now, obviously, we know that's not true. You can't judge a book by its cover. And we know for a fact that people who go to the gym or look cut could be lazy in every other facet of their life, except maybe the gym. So again, would you rather have a fat person who's like a loving partner, goes to work, pays the bills? Or would you rather have a cut partner that's in shape, but they go to the gym all day and don't pay their bills and aren't there as like they are not a good partner, are not a good parent? That's why you don't judge a book by its cover. Because you don't know a person's story until you talk to them. But because we stereotype in our heads, because we are trying to signal to one another things, there's some truth in some of the ways we observe people until there isn't, until you, quote, break the stereotype. And so for myself, when I was heavier, I will, you know, I've been really contemplating this since the Leo Skeppy stuff came out. I'm not sure that I was fat enough long enough to feel like people discriminated against me. I was also in Seattle at the time and everyone was really fat, pro-fatness and like very comforting towards fat people. So I'm not sure that I was ever judged for it. I maintained work. I was working on YouTube and then I was nannying. I had friends. I had lovers. I had partners. I had, I was fine. The only people that bullied me for being fat was my family. (laughs) So conservatives, which is ironic since so many conservatives are so fucking fat. But to be fair, my family is, uh, we do struggle with obesity. We do struggle with like weight. And I think there's a lot of fear that's in that. My dad used to be pretty big and then he lost a lot of weight, which is really good. Uh, Some of his relatives got so big that they got their legs amputated because of diabetes. And I think that's pretty scary. You know, Big D says, would you have done OF when you were heavier? I mean, I was, I wasn't doing OF at the time, but I was doing nude stuff. I was modeling I was doing nude parades. I was modeling in lingerie. I was posting sexy photos. I was doing fat life nudity. So yeah, I was already naked. Who cares? I'm hot, bro. I have never not felt hot even when I was fat. You can't take it away from me, bro. You can't. Like, you can't convince me that I'm not fuckable. (laughs) Not physically. I just don't believe in it. I just, I think everyone's fuckable to somebody. Period. You know? I think your personality plays a much bigger role in your fuckability than your body. My DMs never slowed down because I was fat. And that's because people don't care. Men will fuck fat people. Okay. I don't know. Women will fuck fat. Women fucked me and men fucked me when I was fat. It just didn't matter. The other day we watched Leo Skeppy and he made a fat phobic kind of commentary video. And then he went ahead and took down the video and then made a video recently on TikTok. All right. To hit this properly, the ego is checked at the door. I got some shit to own up to. I deleted the video because it does the opposite of what I want to do. Mm. It made a lot of people feel unsafe with me and that's the last thing that I want. So this is not gonna be a sappy apology video and be manipulative to try and win anybody over. This all made me realize the time in my life when I was overweight actually does trigger the fuck out of me. And it's not the body and the- Just a reminder that Leo Skippy's in his 20s. So he's a pretty young person. Um, and he was a formal fat kid and he's an immigrant and lots and lots of things are interesting. He's gay. There's like a lot of things that is in, that are interesting about him. He's an immigrant, right? From Albania, from Albania, 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 it's Albanian. Anyways, um, so just keep that in mind. This is interesting so far because I'm not the biggest fan of Leo Skeppi. I've actually made a lot of like videos saying I'm not a fan of him, but he's also young. So I want to meet him where he's at. So interesting already. And the way that I looked that triggered me. Mm. It's the painful mindset I was stuck in that I do not want to be reminded of. My whole childhood and early adulthood, I felt very trapped and powerless in a body and a mind that I hated. It wasn't my physical appearance, I thought it was. It was really feeling like I had no control over my life and what that perception did to me. And now whenever I feel powerless, I say jarring shit to myself to snap me out of an old mentality and look for empowerment. But me sharing that in the fucked up way that I did was to help a lot of you and it ended up hurting a lot more of you instead because you feel like I judge you for the way that you look. 
And it also made a lot of people feel like I was judging them for wanting to feel included. That's not what I stand for at all. I never want anyone to feel uncomfortable or unsafe around me ever. But the way that I said things in that video made a lot of you feel disempowered and criticized instead of feeling like I was looking out for you. Mm. And that's always my actual intent and that'll sit right with me. So the video's gone. But not finding my size in things is something I deal with daily. I'm six foot seven and a size Ooh. 16 shoe. Six seven, girl. He's doing really good so far. I really appreciate all of this. Okay. Clothes are a pain in the ass. Shoes rarely ever find. Bags, the strap rarely long enough. Doesn't fit over my body. But that's a situation for me that makes me feel very powerless is when my size is not made. And like I said, I say triggering shit to myself to look for the control I do have when I'm looking at things that make me feel disempowered. And when a brand doesn't make my size, I look at it like saying, fuck them versus giving them my attention and begging them to include me or bullying them to include me. It's 2024. These brands know that people come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. They're aware. They're choosing not to make certain things. Either it's a financial decision or it's an attempt to actually exclude you. But my personal relationship to that is feeling disempowered and not giving any of my attention to it. Hmm. But not everybody has my same relationship to this scenario or the same relationship to feeling powerless. And I don't like that my shit made a lot of people feel hurt. That's my thing to deal with. Everybody is allowed to freely speak their mind. Shouldn't have said that because hmm. I was doing it in that video. But the thing I should have communicated better was I find my power in absence. So I'm not gonna give attention to the brands who don't cater to me. I'm gonna go find the brands and focus on the ones that do or make my own stuff when I can. With all this being said, my aversion to powerlessness and my own relationship to it and my poor communication of that made a lot of you think that I have an aversion to you because of the way that you look. And I wanna make sure everyone knows that is 100% not true. I actually do want to say thank you to everyone who voiced their opinion and told me how hurt you were by this because it really made me reflect. Mm -hmm. When people say I'm hurt, that's my wake up call of like, you did something because that's never my intent. So instead of sitting here and saying I'm sorry because those are just words and they don't do anything for anybody, I'm going to give you my word that I'm going to continue to do any work necessary to make sure that you always know and feel that I'm looking out for you and I'm here to protect you. Mm. I don't love that part. Uh, it feels a little too inappropriate, like parasocial. I'm not a big fan of parasocial uh, encouragement between an audience and a um, content creator. But otherwise, the rest of it was pretty good. Uh, I'm assuming he wrote it out and thought about what he wanted to say. Smart. Uh, I like the messaging. I hope it's authentic. Uh, yeah, the last part makes me uncomfortable. Because he's like a guy in his 20s who's like trying to protect you feels weird, right? Lexi literally said the last bit is my favorite. It feels too parasocial. Lexi, we're on the same page. Um, So not the worst. Uh, Pretty good. I look forward to seeing how that moves forward. I mean, look, he's young. And in all my criticisms of him, I've always been very clear about that. I think he's incredibly inappropriate. I wish he would make a statement about his e -e 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 plan in the same way that he did about this fat phobia one. Like, I wish he would maybe come out and say, like, I shouldn't say things like this, you know, not because I think it's like the end all be all, not because I think it objectively matters. I just think that it would tell me more about him because I think anyone uh, within reason would probably say, hey, like, obviously this was an anger thing I was feeling. I don't really feel this way and I wouldn't do this. And I think if any part of me was really going to carry this plan out, I would be very irresponsible. You know what I mean? So... He hasn't done that about the e -e -e -sh plan, which I think is interesting. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think overall pretty good. We'll see how it ends up impacting him in the future. Because I'd like to see Leo as a person experience a real understanding of self. Maiden says an aversion to powerless powerlessness sounds an awful lot like persistent drive for agency. I mean, I think we pre we kind of guessed that maybe he might have borderline or some sort of neurodivergency just because of his upbringing and very toxic upbringing, like super abusive upbringing. And so a part of me knows he's dealing with a lot. And obviously his desire to be in control makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I think 
neurodivergent people have it, kids with trauma have it. I mean, even organizing this office and changing my set was because on Sunday night around midnight, I told my husband, I was like, I want to feel in control of something and I'm going to feel in control of my office. And he was like, okay. And I was like, yeah, instead of like doing other things is like, I want to do that. I want to do something and feel productive, but I also feel the need to do something that doesn't like end up becoming more of a mess tomorrow. So let me do something productive that makes me feel in control, but also lets me feel like I accomplished something. I rem I like redid the office. That makes me feel pretty good. Benefited the set. I look much better on camera now. Everything looks better for the stream. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, versus in the past, the way I would feel like I was in control of my life was to spend money I didn't have, cut off all my hair, dye my hair funky colors that I wear in, like within reason. It's like, it's not wrong that you want to feel in control because sometimes you just have the feeling. Sometimes it's just like, an, you know, your biology, your trauma, whatever's coming up. It's how you exhibit that control that matters. He decided to get a little fat phobic to protect himself. Okay. I rearranged my office. Past Bernie would have spent money. You know what I mean? So everybody, everybody has a different relationship with it. Yeah, other than the last part, pretty good video. Yeah, it's good that he held himself accountable to his own values and not to the communities. Yeah, I think that's important. I noticed, like, I'm thinking about it. I haven't pre-watched this, so it's taking me a second to process. I do like that he held himself accountable with his own values and not accountable because of his audience's values. I think that's good. Yeah. Jade says, what does funky colors not within reason mean? Like, uh, I really liked having green hair, but it's really unreasonable to keep up or deal with. And uh, I would just dye my hair green and blue. But if you've ever dyed your hair green or blue, for me, it was a pain in the ass to fix my green and blue hair. So I promised myself I would never dye my hair that color again because it's too hard to maintain. Um, so that's what I mean without, like, within reason or without reason. It's like, I loved uh, I love blue and green hair, but girl, the way I suffered when I had it, ooh, that was a very difficult hair color for me to keep up with. Obviously not judging colored hair. I love I love a funky colored hair. Um, but, you know, not doing something like overspending money. It's like, well, that's not within reason. You can't have control of your life by like going thousands of dollars into debt. You know what I mean? You know, you don't want to do that. But it's not wrong if you buy a croissant. You know, maybe I'm like, you know, I'm going to go eat bread. I'm going to have some croissant. You know what I mean? That's okay. Jay says, that makes sense. I figured it wasn't a moral judgment, so I was confused. Yeah, for sure. Love colored hair. I'm about to dye my hair. I got some manic panic. I got some manic panic. No, I'm going to dye my hair. I'm just not going to dye it blue. You know what I mean? Um, But yeah, Super Kitty says, upkeep is a full-time ass job with green and blue. Green and blue is so beautiful, but girl, my spoons, I can't. So, uh, okay, good Leo Skeppy video. I'm very surprised. I'm actually impressed. And I look forward to him getting better and better. But a key point that I just want to say again is that he held himself accountable through his own values, not ours. One of the comments here actually says, he didn't say, I'm sorry. He said, I'll keep it in check. Love that. I love that too. I love, because I really don't like people saying I'm sorry unless they know why. But also, in order to keep yourself accountable through your own values, you got to say, you know what? I disappointed myself. And that's far worse than disappointing my community. Worse than disappointing my community is disappointing myself. Because the kind of community you should have around you is the kind of community that wants you to stay beholden to your values because they're kind of similar to yours in a way. Like not, you don't want to, you don't want to change yourself for your community or the communities around you because you don't always have the shared values, but you should, I think you should want a community that says like, Hey, isn't that like anti your values? Don't you want to walk the walk? Like, Oh my God, could you imagine again me? I'm such a judgmental person. I'm like, not like morally, but you know, I'm gay judging everybody. And I'm saying all of these things about like cheaters and all these things. Could you imagine if I cheated? If, can you imagine if I didn't walk the walk, how devastating that would be? It'd be so much worse. You know what I mean? It would be so much worse if I ended up cheating because I've talked this huge game. That's why it's so much worse when a priest or a quote holy person does something horrible because you're like, you're supposed to be the model. You're supposed to be the leader. And I think in that case, your church should hold you accountable through your own values. I think my audience should say, Brittany, you're the one who's anti-cheating. What are you doing cheating? And I should say, you're right. You're holding me accountable through my own values. And I appreciate that. 
Now, of course, you'll never have to do that because your bitch won't cheat. But you know what I mean? Ripley says, girl, I would judge you so hard if you cheated. You should, girl. Bristany Spalto, fired. I'm putting you in jail. I'm putting you in neurodivergent jail. But yeah, like you better, like I would judge me, girl. I would judge me, girl. Could you imagine? I would judge me, girl. Girl, that would be wild, bro. That would literally be the most wild thing, you know? Oh, that would be crazy. Okay, so shout out to Leo Skeppy. Uh, interesting. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> Visa says, Brittany is crazy. It's so funny. Hey, you know, you got a reputation. You got a reputation. God, can you imagine having that reputation? That's what sucks. Can you, like, you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, nah. Beza says, I would be shook, like, damn, wow, can't trust nobody. Can't. That's why I'm saying you got to walk the walk so your word means something. If I cheated, honestly, bros, fuck. Fuck, bro. Like, I feel like if I cheated, man, that would be, I would, I, I would literally rock my own world. I'd be like, who is she? Has she lost her mind? Is she, is there a tumor pushing up against her brain? What is going on? If I cheated, I would literally get my brain, brain examined. I would assume I have Alzheimer's. I would literally assume I was dying. Like all these people that are like, oh, it's so easy to cheat. Not in the Speak for thyself. It's like those men that are like, oh, 14-year-old girls are attractive. Speak for thyself, sir. Speak for thyself. Speak for thyself, bitch. You ain't speaking for me. Speak for yourself, bitch. I don't have time for thee. Girl. Discord said, oh my gosh, Brittany is dying. My thought if you cheated. Lit Your poor wife. Bro, it would be so devastating, bro. Big D says Jake, Jake Hillenhall is the only one I would cheat with. I mean, he is scrum delicious, bruh. Ooh. Lexi says, I would honestly be worried about you if I ever heard that you cheated. I'd be, I appreciate you because I would also be worried. I would also be so worried, you know. Connor says, I wouldn't date Destiny. Dating Destiny after this last breakup is wild. Bro, the man's on a journey. Our girl on a journey, you know. Kenny says, I would assume that Brittany was possessed and needed an exorcist if she cheated. Bro, that's what I'm saying. Thank God that that's my reputation. Thank God my reputation is like Brittany must be going crazy in order to cheat. That's, thank you. Thank you for seeing me, guys. You know, thank you. Basis says, I've had some wild shit during BPD episodes back in the day, but cheating, I'd have to get checked for a tumor or something. How would that even happen? I don't leave my house. Do you know? Why so many people doubted I had borderline for a while because when I had a borderline like episode or a trigger, I would isolate. So let's say I was heading out with friends and then I'd have like a trigger. I'd be like, hey, guys, I don't feel well. My stomach kind of hurts. I'm going to stay in. And then I would just I crawled into a closet. I loved to I like small spaces. I'm just like my cat. I'd crawl into my closet and just cry on the like closet floor. You know, um, it was so nice, like empty closet, just nice carpet, vacuumed, all cozy, hoodie over my head, on my phone, crying, scrolling through Tumblr, you know, it felt so good, you know, but I never bothered people. I tended to move. I just isolated. So all of my, all the ideas of like borderlines cheat, I was like, that would mean I would have to leave the house. I think I'm introverted, girl. I don't got time to leave the house when I'm in an episode unless I'm driving very fast and listening to like System of a Down or Disturbed and I'm like blasting music on the freeway. I do not want to see people when I'm in an episode. The last thing I want to do is deal with humans. You know? Okay. Gaya says, what's the tea? I don't pay attention to Destiny stuff anymore. Nothing, girl. The tea is that hurt people hurt people. That's the tea, girl. Okay, that's the T. That's the T. T emoji in the chat, guys. T emoji in the chat. Members have this beautiful teapot emoji. Colleen says, my closet was my safe space during meltdowns too. Bro, is that a neurodivergent thing? Tell me. Because I love a closet space. I love a small space. I love a bathroom. I love a shower. You know, 
Because this is borderline cheat. That would mean I'd have to talk to someone as intensely as I talk to my fiance ain't happening. Bro, this is my theory that promiscuity, because my therapist, when she was diagnosing me with borderline, she asked me if I have impulse control when it comes to sex. And I said, no. Which, by the way, impulse control when it comes to sex is interesting to me, especially with chronic cheaters. Because I wonder if it's their ADHD, like Sneeko and Destiny are impulsive cheaters. And I wonder if it's because of their ADHD. They both have ADHD. Or is it their lack of morals? Or is it like, do they have abandonment issues or something? But they both have impulsive cheating problems. Like they have to lie to women and they have to cheat. Like it's just like something in their fucking brains. And then I'm like, I wonder if it's their like their relationship with their ADHD or in the mixture of their trauma plus ADHD. Because there are some people who have like impulsivity problems. I don't tend to have impulsivity problems. I have, um, uh, I'm so cautious as a person. I don't have that. But I have like a need to feel like, how am I going to be in control? I'm going to spend money. So my therapist asked me, she's like, are you very promiscuous? And I was like, no. I mean, depending on how you count how many sexual partners I've had, uh, it's either four or 10, depending if you count women, oral, penetration. Like it just depends on how you count how many people I've been with, right? 10, eight, 10. It just depends on how you count it. Does sucking a titty count as a sexual partner? But I've had like fucking 200. You know what I mean? What does that mean? So I was like, no, I'm not a promiscuous person. I told her my sexual history. She goes, no, that's not it. Do you, um, uh, she's like, do you gamble? And I was like, no, gambling is such a no. And I was like, oh, I do buy new cars every few years. Oh, and I do have a lot of credit card debt. And we talked about it and it was really my impulse, like my desire to take control. So like every time I was going through a huge episode, I would get my hair chopped off or I would dye it a funky color, which I loved by the way, like no regrets. Or I loved every time I shaved my head, like none of that is a regret. It's just like the fact that I, why I did it. I didn't just do it because I was having a great time. I did it because I was in a bad place. So I would have loved to have done those things, which I eventually did from a good place, right? So it's like, it's like when we're having these conversations about what is my borderline, what is my what, what makes me do things, it really puts into clarity how much about yourself can be categorized into these different unhealthy and healthy categories. So again, I'm not just judging people because they did a thing. Like if you tell me I have impulse control and I'm really suffering from it and I'm hurting a lot of people because of it, that fucking sucks. But if you sit there and tell me like, I don't think it's a big deal and I'm going to do it anyways and I don't give a fuck who it hurts, that's really fucked up right? But so if you tell me I'm struggling, I have borderline, I'm going to yell at people or I'm going to have chronic cheating issues because I feel abandoned. So I go wrap myself in the arms of somebody else. That's something we can work on. But if you tell me I'm going to do it no matter what, I don't give a fuck about people. You're going to have to decide are your morals and values going to be the reason you don't do things, not just because you hurt people. Like sometimes you have to have a conversation with yourself of if I don't seem to care about hurting other people, what about myself? Which To be fair, it's a very Catholic narrative. So I grew up Catholic. And one of the narratives of Catholicism is you're sinning not just against yourself or not just against God and your people, but yourself. So when you sin against the self, you're kind of doing the contradictory thing, moving towards evil, which is sort of a mythical concept. Like, oh, she's got the demons inside of her. She's possessed by Satan. She's so far from God, your joy, that you've become this evil thing in in, in sort of connection to, to Lucifer. So when I think about sinning against myself, I think about making decisions now that are not going to be sins against myself. Of course, I'm a secularist. I'm an atheist now, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like I think about, okay, how do I make sure that I'm doing good by myself, that I'm not hurting my body more by exercising too much, that I'm not, you know, in a calorie deficit in a way that basically I now have an eating disorder. How do I make sure that I'm keeping my mental health in check and I'm not making excuses for bad behavior? How do I make sure that what I'm viewing is correct or at least as subjectively correct as I can get to in a way that makes sense? Like, how do I do that? Well, I find the ways. For me, it's checklists and previous behavior and just remembering like, oh, I got to make sure check things. But I do think that there's like this idea that every borderline is having the same experience or every autistic person is having the same experience or every person and we're not. But I think if you're in a similar category, you are like, it's interesting when I talk about my borderline, who in my audience is like, that's my experience. So then in my brain, I go, okay, we are all in the similar category. 
What else do we have overlap with? And then what else do we deviate from? That's why when people hear you tell their, your stories and it's nothing like theirs, they're like, there's no way that's your experience. And it's like, well, yeah, I guess like it just depends. Like it depends on who's having the experience. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Thank you.